First off, you'll need to arrange for Internet Service from an Internet Service Provider or ISP. In most domestic situations nowadays, your own neighbors will provide the best source of information on this subject. Ask them if they have Internet access and if they're happy with it. They will probably tell you how much they're paying for the service, usually a monthly bill, and how fast and reliable their own experience has been. Ask several neighbors and choose the best deal you can find. In some neighborhoods, the best technology relies on the same coaxial cable that brings cable TV services. This is generally known as cable internet service. In other neighborhoods, the best deal comes from the local telephone company and is known as DSL. Your distance from a local telephone switching station will determine whether DSL service is faster than cable service. In either case, your ISP will provide service through some kind of connector in one or more of your walls. Generally, they will make their services available through your existing telephone or cable TV connectors. Choose one that's in a convenient place where you have nearby electrical power and some kind of shelf, table, or desk that will allow access to computer and network equipment and perhaps a jumble of wires as your network grows. Because of the limited range of Wi-Fi radio transmission, it's generally best to choose a location near the middle of your home for best coverage. A DSL connection comes in through a standard telephone connector, which looks like this. DSL technology also requires that you insert small, inexpensive DSL filters in series with your DSL residential gateway device and with all of your other non-DSL telephone equipment. That's everything you're already using, like your phones, answering machine, and burglar alarm, to prevent them from interfering with your DSL services. By this means, your ISP is able to share your telephone line with your existing telephone services. Your ISP should provide several of these DSL filters for your use, and you can buy more from any electronic supply store like Radio Shack. If you forget to install one of these, your DSL services will probably fail whenever you operate the associated telephone device. Cable internet service usually comes in through a standard cable TV connector, which looks like this. Usually, your ISP will also offer to provide you with the appropriate wireless residential gateway hardware that we've already mentioned. Sometimes, they will provide this equipment as a free perk to secure your business. Sometimes they sell it to you. And sometimes the arrangement is more of a lease or rental situation. You may be forced to pay a little extra for a gateway device that includes wireless technology. And for our purposes in this movie, we're going to assume that your hardware has that capability in addition to wired Ethernet. And that's the usual arrangement. Your ISP may also provide you with username and password information that you will need later when you are configuring your gateway hardware. Sometimes this is not necessary, but if it is necessary, your ISP will make a point of delivering it and you should write it down. Make sure your notes clearly associate this username and password with your internet service provider because later on you'll find that your wireless residential gateway hardware will need another username and another password and you won't want to get them mixed up.